And uh, just to confirm, you're okay with the recording, right? If we record and post it on our YouTube channel, I think we talked about it. Yes, but yes, totally. Um, great. I think we're gonna have. We should have a full house. Uh, people usually trickle in one to two minutes late. <laughs> but yeah, we can. Okay, it's time. Let's get started. So hi everyone. I have the pleasure to introduce uh, Lena, who's going to be our guest speaker for today. Um, and the bio that she provided, uh, Lena is a front-end engineer. She's coming from the interdisciplinary field of digital humanities. And Lena's goal is to diversify tech intersectional. I'm sure she'll tell us more about what that means. She works with the HER DAO. Um, is that the right way to say it? It's HER DAO. The you just say HER DAO. Yeah. ...to blockchain conferences and hackathons because she believes this is an important step to prevent coded biases that are happening in Web 2 uh, for Web 3. So since 2021, Lana's been learning about Web 3, Web 3 development, and is actively working and creating a mentorship network for female and non-binary developers. Um, and another important step to making Web3 more inclusive is to bring in awareness for well-being. And so to achieve this goal, Lana's working on proof of meditation, uh, a DApp to incentivize people to meditate more. So with that, then I'll just give you a quick uh, background of who's been doing here. So we have trainees from six different countries. Uh, one third of our trainees are women. Um, everyone's a recent university graduate and people are preparing for careers in uh, data engineering, uh, machine learning engineering, and Web3 engineering. So everyone is a, everyone's looking. This is probably everyone's, if not their first job, it's one of their first jobs. And so we're really curious to know about what's happening in the world of Web3 in the real world. And this uh, slightly unusual idea, at least for me, of a DAO, uh, we'd love to hear more, but it just, maybe I'm too old, but it sounds a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit fantastic. So over to you, uh, and then we'll do Q&A at the end. Would you prefer the questions if they're held to the end, or can people ask questions in the middle? Just like I think during during my uh, what I say, everybody can just raise their hand and ask a question. Um, sure. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah. I, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, great to meet all of you. Um, as Arun already introduced me, I am a blockchain and front end developer. I actually studied digital humanities, which is like social science and computer science. So I studied languages and um, also programming. And um, after during the university, like I already realized, like the system is not really built for women. <laughs> like no, for for people that enter the space uh, at a later stage. I think studies are already like assuming you have experience coding. So I actually did a boot camp afterwards, um, which was very helpful for me. Um, and I, I always advise people um, to to yeah to um, pursue or look for um, communities that make you feel safe in your learning experience. Because I think the um, a approach that you have to suffer learning programming that you have to cry is maybe not the best one and a bit outdated <laughs> um so yeah um i am currently not developing too much only when i go to hackathons but i work for her dao since half a year and um, this is like um, a DAO, and I will explain this in a second. Um, DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Um, what we do um, is um, the tech space is very male dominated and also still pretty like in C levels, you still have a lot of like white people, white men. So um, I think in Web 2, um, we have, um, we can see what kind of effects this had on um, the tools we use, that we have problems with facial recognition for people that are not white male people, um, and a lot of other algorithms that, um, yeah, um, work can be discriminating just based on the data they were fed and the algorithms that have been developed um, with not keeping everybody in mind. Um, and in my studies, I did a lot of research also on um, ethical AI and also how to prevent discrimination. And one of the um, 
one of the main factors that I realized or that um, was that we need to diversify <laughs> um, the whole tech space. Like, the co like as a developer, we need to um, have more diverse teams, um, but also in all other levels. Um, and this is why I joined HerDAO in February. Um, her, we are a women and non-binary um, focused developer and business DAO. So we don't only, um, act, we are not only focused on people that are developers, but that will work in the tech space or want, do want to enter the tech or web three space. Um, we um, currently provide um, scholarships to conferences um, because we believe at these conferences um, there's like a lot of um, right now blockchains this blockchain space i hope everybody knows should i give like a very short introduction to blockchain or is everybody up to date you know if you have one to two minutes why not okay um, so for everybody for who blockchain with three are words that you kind of heard but <laughs> cannot really draw a picture. Um, blockchain is um, a technology to store data decentralized, which is a new or like an alternative way to what we know um, currently where Google and data and Amazon, they own our data because we just give them for free. And they also store them um, in a very like um, centralized way, which can lead to many problems like surveillance and they know all our moves. Um, and in the dis uh, and with blockchain technology, we can solve some of these problems because um, you can imagine it's like a server, uh, like a lot of com servers all over the world, like a network that save all the same information. So even if you would attack one, one of these servers, um, it would not be, it would be a problem because all of the data can be accessed everywhere else. And this data can also be accessed by everybody. But another thing about it is that it's encrypted. Um, and on this encryption, like people have been working for a really long time to develop encryption technology, encrypted technology, also to um, offer privacy to humans in a world that is more and more digitalized and where we can where, where we as humans are more and more transparent through the data we leave in in the internet um so um what um through this decentralization we will also have more um we just it just offers us a new technology to build prod um um, to build some products in a in a new way, in a different way, and most of all, it will give us the possibility to uh, distribute capital and knowledge in a way that was not possible before, and also give people access to this in that that didn't have the access before. And um, just a very short example, for example, sometimes you you might not be able to get a bank account, but everybody could get a wallet um, which is like your own personal bank account or like your your wallet but it's a digital wallet you can just um, get that and you could work in a web3 space um, and then just get uh, the tokens to this wallet so you're actually not dependent on uh, a centralized bank um, which is I think a huge advantage to some people um, or to many people um, and um yeah so what i was telling you um initially about was um the dao i'm working for which is focused to bring more underrepresented groups into the space um and we do this through bringing people to conferences and to hackathons these conferences um as i said blockchain technology is very new so far it's just being built there's not many products that you can use right now which makes it so exciting because everybody who's joining now can actually be a part of building this like imagine 20 years ago when the internet was built you could have been part and decided how it should be built and actually right now we can do this with blockchain which is very exciting to me um and um yeah so we um 
at these conferences, a lot of um, infrastructure is being built, a lot of knowledge is being shared, a lot of um, um, also knowledge is created, and also there's a lot of capital. So we think also, um, yeah, it's very, very important to bring more diverse people to this space, um, to these conferences. And um, currently there's also e-safari happening in Kenya. Um, I don't know if some of you went there or I got planning to go. Um, but um, one of these con I think uh, Doro is going to connect with a couple of people there. Yeah, cool, amazing. Um, yeah, we also have um, Herdao. And um, we are currently, we are, you can imagine us like a community, um, like, um, like an NGO, but <laughs> it's like a, for, for building communities, for empowering people and bringing them together and also creating a strong network for them and currently we have um, communities in latin america um, we are building right now in kenya and um, then we also have in bali in singapore and korea and then also a lot of um, sub nodes in europe um, now i feel like i gave you a small overview of where we are and what we do um, maybe not <laughs> one last thing. Um, what we offer also to developers and builders is first of all, a lot of like people that are being onboarded into our community can access a lot of free education, contacts to um, a lot of top tech companies that are also looking for developers, um, but also the opportunity to um, find teams to take part in hackathons because, and the reason why we want to bring as many people to hackathons is because first of all, things are going are being built there. Um, but it's also a very, very amazing opportunity to understand how Web3 works, what is important about the Web3 project and product, what makes it, why you have, why it has to be in Web3 and not Web2. You will have to very, um, also um, um, give an explanation and understand why this is um, valuable in this case. And, um, and you will also, um, yeah, just being part of what's being built right now. Um, and also make amazing connections. And what we always say is um, bringing people to these hackathons will make them, bring them from builders to founders to then investors, because a lot of these hackathon projects, if they are successful, they will actually get funding. Like you will get direct, if you are successful in a um, popular hackathon, you can get like, investors we see will contact you and be like hey you have a great project we want to fund you can you and you're super like fast also get into the channel of being a founder thinking about what's important to become a found becoming a founder and i think it's very interesting and um, very empowering to go through an experience like this um so is there any questions to maybe yeah. Could I ask you a question, Linda, just to start the questions off? Yeah. Could you explain, I mean, this, again, the idea of a DAO is kind of weird. Yeah. And so could you tell us a little bit more about what a DAO is and how the sort of contractual parts work? And then you, know, you sign up and this thing goes out into the wild and then everyone has to abide by it? Is it like kind of, <laughs> does it, how does that work in practice? Yeah. Um, thank you for this question, because I think now I just talked about what is possible, but not the structure. So Decentralized Autonomous Organization, a DAO, um, stands for um, an organization that is not from top to level, top to 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 bottom level, right? You don't have a CEO, you don't have a CTO, but um, a DAO stands more for a community where people, like-minded people, come together for a cause. This can be a source, um, either like um, the same interest in pizza, pizza, and then you have a pizza DAO where people just join this but it can also be for a cause like education i want to bring education to my community um and the special thing about this dao is that um, instead of going somewhere and actually registering it and having like uh, one person responsible for for all the um payments and all the infrastructure and the idea you would have people coming together um 
and that together decide on the infrastructure how you want to distribute power to who who you want to distribute the power so in the beginning when a DAO is founded you normally have a smaller team that would um, decide on a lot of um, principles and then they would be written into code into a smart contract which is um, yeah, basically like a contract, but just um, written on in code and also deployed on the blockchain. Um, there you will write into how many people have to agree to, um, to so something gets accepted. Um, so now you might ask like what to agree to. <laughs> in a DAO structure, as I said, nobody would like, it will be telling you what you should do, right? So everybody can um, send a proposal. There is already DAO tooling that exists. So if five of us um, are in one DAO, I can send a proposal and say like, hey, I want to think it would be great if we would fund, if we would create a new sub DAO in, um, in Germany where I live. And then we would, um, everybody would have to, I would have to like explain what I'm planning, how big the budget is, and then people could vote on it. Um, and if more than 50%, we re rewrote this in our smart contract, if more than 50% agree, this amount goes uh, to my account and then I can distribute the money to what I want to do. Um, so, um, and how do get DAO fundings? Um, I think a very big misconception um, just to the history of DAOs. In the beginning of this year, DAOs was like the new concept. Like everybody thought you could create a DAO for everything. And there was like a boom in DAOs and many of them got funded, but they ended like super quick because they didn't, before getting this funding, really think about a sustainable business model. Like a DAO, even though it's decentralized, you still have to have a business model and think how to also create revenue. Um, and so a DAO is not, um, you will have, like, you might get initial funding for this DAO and should be, um, and then from this DAO, from this money, people can, make proposals but these proposals um should also <laughs> um yeah you want also want to have um to um for our DAO just as an example uh, we offer translation we offer consultancy um and we also offer organizing community events um because we are a community DAO but we also have a very international community and we believe education should also be delivered in the um, local language so these are all um, <clears throat> also um, work that that agrees with our um, um, our direction but of course we should we also need to get in have an income right because we cannot do all of this community work for free there is a lot of different DAOs um, and i can just explain you like there's for example in wait i'm gonna get this here um so DAOs is normally like used as um as a term but it's very a very broad term and you can imagine there's like different DAOs. like our our DAO is a community DAO, and we are also planning to go into another kind of DAO, which um DAOs, which would be like investor DAOs. This is where a lot of people with um, in <clears throat> investment experience come together and um, yeah, they um, would also, but in a decentralized way, get funding and then distribute this funding to um, pre-seed or yeah, to, to startups and decide together on this. And as you have different investment um, companies that focus on different um, um, businesses you can have the same with an investor DAO and um, in this case it just makes sense also because it's transparent and you know because I think what is important to understand you don't need blockchain and decentralization 
decentralization for everything but in some cases you want to know where's the money going that i'm <laughs> giving to someone and um, what is actually what is this company doing and i think this is important for example for compute community work you want to know what people are doing with the money you give them when they say we, you, they're doing some, this for a cause um, same with investment dollars right like if i want to trust an investment company to like do invest in good projects and like be careful with money it just makes sense for for me to also have an overview about how they handle this money and what kind of companies that they invest right um and then there's like um you can also of course um have a DAO for protocols protocols in this case means um more like technical protocols um in web3 for example you can create um we have uh, it's like more infrastructure tools or somebody um it's more on a basic basic technical level like you have you have a product because people will use your protocol to develop some something um and but you want to because but because they are infrastructure tool you want to have many people with different expertises that um, share their knowledge and decide on this infrastructure of this protocol together. Because as I explained to you earlier, when building the infrastructure that which we are doing right now, and there's not enough discussion and not enough different perspectives towards something, even if it's very technical, it could like you we could develop a lot of products that are not for a diverse global community. So um this is also um, very interesting. And then you can ha also, there's um, Im community DAOs, impact DAOs like ours. Um, one of my favorite um, examples for a DAO is actually re a research DAO. So imagine um, in medicine, for example, um, we don't like, women are not really represented black people are, are not really represented in research because mo normally the research su subject is the white male so a lot of medication is only <laughs> directed uh, like just written on the package but it's only for white men right and so there's a lot of like wrong medication happening and um some some medical like some things are not even really researched because for a really long time there was no interest in researching it. So you could, for example, found um, a research DAO for female health. Um, and then like, probably every woman could invest in this DAO, but because they invest in it, they would also get a vote. This is something that I should have said earlier. Once you are part of a DAO, it's like you would invest somewhere and um, uh, like in our traditional imagination, only big shareholders of companies have the right to influence the direction that a company is going to. But once you are part of a DAO and you invested either work or money into this DAO, you will also get voting rights. So in this research DAO, you could invest um, some money into this research DAO and then you would have votes on like what kind of research you employ and what kind of topics you want to research um and you could um yeah be, like be independent of a centralized system which is like a research system or education system or finance system that does not benefit everyone and is sometimes very very hard to navigate um because it's sometimes not very um modern or like um adapted to to our current social society um so yeah this is actually what i am um, yeah what i think is amazing and amazing opportunities another um great opportunities that DAOs offer uh that you might be because you're um connected to a global community you can way easier get funded. You don't have to depend on VCs. You could also just um, promote your cause with your community. Um, <clears throat> for example, if you want to start your local business, you could also, and it's, um, 
you are um, you're creating really beautiful handbags. <laughs> you already have an Instagram community. Then, then your Instagram community, you could call out to them to um, give you small funding. Um, and if everybody just gives you a small funding, in the end, um, you could have a base to actually start your business. Um, and but because it's in the smart contract and it, it's it's transparent you also have a responsibility towards the people that invested in you because um, you, of course, should not invest in um, in a project that you have not researched properly and that you um, don't trust or <laughs> that, that you have not communicated with. But, um, yeah, I think this is also something that makes founding some more accessible. Um, so there was a question in which currency uh, funding is made. Um, so in the blockchain <laughs> ecosystem, um, it's not one blockchain that exists, right? There's a lot of different blockchains, and um, it's also um, interesting with what, like, when you start start your own business, you also have to think what blockchain will probably <clears throat> the most fitting for you and your business. Um, for example, most blockchains um, don't really work on phones yet. Um, CELO is like C-E-L-O. Blockchain is one of the only ones that really focuses also on mobile development, which I think is important for, um, in general, to, to be accessible to everyone, even if they don't own a laptop and just a phone. Um, so, um, and... So then depending on the blockchain, you would get different currencies because right now you don't, and in um, in the, there's a lot of different cryptocurrencies. Um, so depending on which blockchain you deploy your business, uh, and um, you would also get that funding maybe in this, these kind, uh, these, this currency. Um, but um, you can also, um, create your it, it's it's very interesting this is also something that we always discuss for example we in Herda we have different and um, one thing that is like an infrastructure tool to to handle all your fin finances is a multi-sig wallet this means um this means that you create a wallet but not one person can just sign off the money and send it somewhere, but like at least three people, like if you have like five, five people on this multi-sig wallet, at least three people have to agree with the transaction. Like I could is issue a transaction and be like, oh, I want to have tw 2K in my account. And then they just like, I cannot just send it. Two other people will have to sign this transaction before it will actually be followed through. Um, and we have, um, because we are community down, we get funding from a lot of different projects. Um, we have different multi-sig wallets deployed on different blockchains, but um, I think it really de depends in the end on, on the projects you're working with to decide in what coin you get your funding. The next question was um, actually how you do a DAO contract. Um, I think you uh, there is already DAOs that help DAOs to get started and that can help you also um, design your DAO contract because one thing that's very important to understand about smart contract development is normally in development you will always you will like publish your product and you can all you will get bugs and it will come back to you and you can fix these bugs and um, and with a smart contract, the problem is that you can you can update it, but you cannot really change it. Once a transaction is done, you cannot reverse it. So if some money is sent, you cannot just like, get it back. So if something goes wrong, you can lose so much money. So to design a smart contract, you want to be very, very careful and and talk to experts and get it audited because otherwise you could just like lose your funds super easily um, so definitely for a smart contract depending on the blockchain you're deploying and um, everything there is ethereum there would be solidity but you can also learn rust for um, 
Nia and Solana blockchain. But um, you, yeah, what, if you just got started, you should definitely also ask mentors and, and experts in the field to help you create your DAO contract. Even though there's already, I think, but there's also already tools that will help you set up a DAO pre pre pretty easily if you if you don't have too many pre pre prerequisites. Um, I got another question. Yeah, and um, so I'm not sure what you mean with if you want to adopt a DAO. If you want to out, create out of your organization a DAO, um, <clears throat> there's definitely tools, as I just said, that, that will help you. You have to look them up because I just knew them, but I don't have them right now, but I would definitely send them to you. And um, still, I would advise you in my experience not to set up a DAO in like a day. It, it, it needs a lot of thinking, a lot of like understanding what a DAO actually means. Um, and um, also maybe join another DAO before you found your own DAO, just to understand what kind of problems can occur because it's it, it's super complicated so it really takes time so you would also not just like be a founder after like never working in any company because it's good to understand different levels of um of how businesses work before you start your own business right um yes i think most most blockchains um offer infrastructure for DAOs, not all of them. For example, for with Bitcoin, you could, of course, not uh, create a DAO because it's just a um, transaction, um, money transaction blockchain, right? But I think um, most other blockchains are already offer that infrastructure. Um, the next question is, <clears throat> mm, wait. So, why do you choose the Web3 track? What can you say about the future of it and how it will conquer its Web? So, I think Web3 will not totally conquer Web2. It will coexist. Like, you will always have, like, centralized structures and decentralized structures. I think Web3 just stands for AI and interaction of AI, blockchain, and IoT. And just offers us to automate certain things but also i think we should always understand we should not automate everything for some some actions we need humans we need people who have feelings who have like a complex understanding of um of how things are connected because currently everything that we understand under as ai is normally just like some small processes that have been trained to to follow a certain decision making process right <clears throat> so um you could of course um to the next question is this in real life or do we have to can it be remote um i think you can definitely also have a local DAO. I think it's just a way of uh, organizing yourself. It also helps with if, in case like you live in a political system where you have to stay anonymous. In a DAO, you can stay anonymous because there are certain ways of proving and um, like building up your reputation, so you can earn money and um, you can have voting rights without having to reveal your identity. I think which is important sometimes. Um, Sorry, Lena. Just yeah. a, just a follow up question. But what's the minimum number of yes, people? Yes, I, I just read it. Um, so I think to form a DAO, the minimum number should be five people, um, to reach like a certain level of decent decentralization and different opinions. Um, it also because it's also a lot of work. You cannot if you do it alone. It's just too much work, and you have to think about lot about different things in a lot of DAOs. I will also send you some very good example DAOs that have great documentation. You have different, you, you have to focus on different things. Like in every other business, you have marketing, you have treasury, um, you have operations, like how you can earn your money, right? You have, um, 
you have the community. Um, there's a lot of different fields that you need to kind of um, have an overview over and um, plan, design before you actually launch your DAO. There's like also a lot of planning that goes into launching a DAO. If you're not careful enough, you could either grow too fast and not having then not having the infrastructure for it, right? Or and forget a lot about things. Um, but wait. So is there a listing of all DAO found in location or um no unfortunately there's like I think not a map of like a global map where you can look up your local DAO, but also one of the reasons is that they are still like most of the DAOs are very global. There are some comp um some communities that work also on creating like city DAOs, like local DAOs. Um and I think you can also yourself start something where you say like, hey, we, we are not very happy with our, how our government and our social infrastructure works. So we want, just want to create our own community DAO in our city or our village where we use this automated process to, um, to distribute funds that we get in the community. Like everybody in the community chips in like $5 and then the whole community can decide together how to distribute like what kind of social projects you want to distribute this these this money this could also always be a possibility um but yeah as i said there's like a few DAOs that are very big and that have also a lot of like local um in uh, DAOs, um and i will send them to you later in in an email that can arun can share with all of you um Fisia, you raise your hand. Do you want to ask a question? Yeah. Uh, nice talk. Thank you very much. I think I uh, get the whole point. Yeah. But in order to actually uh, really, really understand it, can you tell us a little bit more by comparing it to an open source kind of framework? Not actually yeah. regarding the uh, cost related things because uh, as we know, open source are free and DAOs might not be uh, as free as this, but regarding to the contributors, the members, yeah. the overall team structure and the overall organization related type of yeah. thing. Uh, can you say a little bit more? I think that's a very good example. I just used it like last, last week that I think open source projects are one of the first decentralized projects that, that, that you can use as an example. Um, because in an open source um, project, you will start contributing. If you're new, you can maybe only get smaller tickets um, or you have to propose something, but this only has to be accepted. And once you have more contribution to this open source project, you can get more responsibilities and more say and also uh, other people contributing, right? Um, so com this is pretty similar to a DAO. What is um, the difference is probably the funding in this case, um, because in the open source project you contribute with work, right? And in um, in a DAO you can either contribute with your time as an active contributor, but you could also contribute with funds that you you send to the DAO and be like, I will provide that many funds. But of course, you also, in the con contract, there will also be a clause that you cannot own more than so and so many voting rights. Because in a decentralized DAO, you don't want anybody to have 50% of all the votes. So it's very important to also create an infrastructure where, where nobody can, for example, own more than a cer certain share of the whole, um, value of, of the um, DAO. Um, I would now go to two more questions and then um, also take the raised hand. Um, so did it, did that answer your question, Fisia? Yeah, yeah, actually okay. it is. Okay, so two benefits to using a DAO board to her DAO that wouldn't have. Um, I think 
definitely the global aspect of um of just like having a community all over the world um we have access to so many amazing human resources and um and this um I mean, alone the payment structure, right? Because normally, if you want to pay someone, you will have to do a tr bank transfer. And this is very complicated if you have a global community, because mostly, like, if you want to transfer money, um, you will have, like, if your bank is not connected to that bank, it will have to go through other banks, and then it takes some days, and you have to pay a fee. And um, being in this, like, global stake, um, like, where we are right now where we have community members from india from um from from kenya from south america from the us from europe um, and we need to pay people we <laughs> um cryptocurrencies are the best way because in 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 seconds you can transfer the money which is um just like makes a lot of payment processes a lot easier and then also um i think as we are for the community, um, I think it's actually very important to have include the the community into decision making, um, because even if we are a very diverse DAO, um, I'm the only white person in this DAO, but even though we are very diverse, we are still not representing everyone, and to then get the opinions and and also the voting of 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 people from all over the world and also propositions for topics that um, we haven't thought about. I think that is very amazing that people can just step up and propose something and just contribute with their work from, from all over the world. It just, it just gives us access to a way big <laughs> uh, community than it would normally be the case. Um, um, Okay, so we don't fund projects yet. It's in the plan of our future, like her DAO. What, um, what we do is um, we send women to conferences and hackathons we, um, because most of the time they cannot pay for a hotel and flights because it's, um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't take a question. No, somebody left the conversation. I'm very sorry for that. Um, so um yeah so but because we right now still also have to create our own treasury but now i'm gonna take maybe muhammad you also put a question in the chat but you also raised your hand do you want to ask your question yes uh thank you uh, for the wonderful session and i want to ask two questions the first one is uh how do are now overcome the fluctuation uh, situation in the crypto market. Mm -hmm. This the second uh, question is how conflict how conflict in DAO mm -hmm. is managed. Uh, <laughs> the member conflict. Yeah, uh, two very good questions. Um, the first one we are currently in crypto winter. For everybody who is um, not familiar with this space, um. This means uh, a lot of cryptocurrencies, the value, the, the market in general is very volatile and currently everything is pretty down. So um, in the beginning of the year, we had a bull market and everybody was just throwing around with money. And right now it's of course a bit harder to apply for grants and to get funding for our mission. But I think because our mission is very, very urgent and people are aware, and we also were very successful with our work that we have done so far. In the end, I believe a lot of this 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 bear market, like right now, what we have, the crypto winter is also important to filter out projects that have not been thinking about a good business structure because most company um most DAOs and most projects that um that have a well thought business structure, they did not suffer too much. And they also still have money and still have money to also give projects that to, to like ours. Um, and your second question was, can you please repeat it? <laughs> yes, uh, how, how, how DAO 
uh, how conflict right how, yes how okay. the money so there is it, this can always happen of course you work with people from different backgrounds very international and also in general people have different ways of um working and communicating and um for this it's important that you have moderation in your channels um and also an understanding of being open there is of course always the opportunity and the possibility for conflict there's actually DAOs that help help to moderate in case of um you can like pay ask them to join and pay them because of course if you don't have like a centralized structure where somebody is on top you have to discuss sometimes topics right and you won't agree on everything and there's nobody who's like i vote this and so i think um it just gives more space for compromises, but you have to be open to, to, to take them. And sometimes you will also get into the situation where you won't find a compromise and the, like a DAO goes into a like with their, um, with their vis vision, they will go into a direction that you don't like anymore and you will separate from that. And um, I think that is like every other company, but yeah, I think it's important to, be open in general. Um, people are very friendly and open. So, Adnet, you raised your hand earlier already. Uh, do you want to talk and ask a question? Yeah. So, as you've said, uh, uh, once the smart contract is uh, deployed, uh, uh, deployed on a blockchain, it's it's uh, difficult or impossible to change it. So, as the time progress in there is some change to be made. Uh, how can we address that? Mm -hmm. Or do we have to like uh, build it from scratch? Yeah. Um, so what, like you can update it, right? As I explained earlier, the important thing is to really think about the design because changing it, or like updating it will take some time and it's a bit complicated um so and also everything that happens during before it's up being updated you cannot change but an example for how something is updated is the ethereum match that happened right now ethereum changed from proof of the consensus mechanism of proof of work which is very bad for the environment and um to proof of stake which is like 99 percent more energy efficient and um, they, this just happened last Friday. It was very exciting and a very, very big move also for blockchain to become mainstream and to be adapted into, adopted into the mainstream. And um, this um, actually had like, such a huge backstory because somebody proposed an update, somebody proposed a change, and then people worked for like four or three or four or five years on actually implementing this change. And then because a lot of people, um, <clears throat> because this is also again a decentralized structure. So you have to have like more than 55 people, uh, 50 people, 51, 50 people to agree on an update. So, um, and um, so if you want to update your smart contract, you will have to convince 50% of more than 50% of your DAO to agree with this update. And then you can also update your smart contract. And so there is the opportunity, but you will have, it's a lot of work. So um, of course, sometimes you have to adapt it with the time progressing and your, um, in your DAO progressing. But in general, um, this will again be a voting um, process and a proposal process. And then, um, and then, yeah, there's actually a question regarding this. How da do DAO overcome 51% attacks? So <clears throat> you also want to um, design your smart contract <laughs> in a way that you might, uh, this cannot happen or it's very smart possibility for this happening because if you have 51 percent attack of like on your treasury and i don't know how much money you have in your treasury 
But as I, with my example, right, earlier, if you have five people and three of them have to sign a transaction for it to go through. If three of the people, like you have 1K, you just got your initial funding. And, and, um, and then three of these uh, five people say like, hmm, we're not gonna do this. We're just gonna, um, take the money to our accounts and then they just do transaction and sign it. I think that can always happen, right? But so for this not to be happening, it's always better to like create like a bigger core team with for example nine people and then five people have to sign. And um and also maybe a very good approval process for the whole thing. And um and uh at one point, when you have a very huge community, I think 51% attacks you can definitely also prevent or like try to prevent with really not allowing people to have more voting than a certain percentage and also to implement quadratic voting, um, which is a concept that if I have 10 votes, I can, I, I cannot like, just a very short explanation for quadratic voting. Quadratic voting means like if I got one vote to a project, it's like one of my votes and I have 10, okay? But if I want to give another vote to the same project, I have to pay two and then I have to pay four and then it's already over, right? I cannot pay eight anymore because my 10 are gone. So it will like quadratically get more expensive for me to vote on the same issue. So this is also a way to prevent somebody, like even if they have a lot of money, it will just be too expensive after eight votes, uh, after eight votes to actually acquire that many votes. So um, to to implement these kind of uh, voting structures is also helpful to prevent attacks. And so the current shortcomings with styles. Um, so I think there's many. <laughs> it's not all the, the bright future and like so easy and uh, great to get everything. I think what I said before is very important. Don't just jump in head over because that will be super stressful. Um, it's very important to plan what kind of voting tools are you gonna use, where to deploy a smart contract, who's gonna help you writing it, um, like the whole, infrastructure of your DAO, like to think it well through is very helpful. And to also create a great knowledge base. And problem in it current, currently in DAOs is still that because it is decentralized and everybody is working in different projects, people are busy and they just do some work and then they don't document it. So even if you want to be decentralized in the end, one person is in charge of this job and because they didn't document what they did, nobody else can just take over, right? So one of the most important thing is in DAOs, if you want to keep it decentralized and accessible to everyone, is to really create a very great knowledge base of like how to onboard people, how to follow through with certain processes. Like, you know, when you start working in a new company, you get like a five, week of training, right? You will be introduced in all the tools that are used, you will be presented to all the different um, stage um, departments. And um, I think the same you have to do in a DAO, that is very important. Um, and it can also, I think a DAO is also not for everything, um, for every structure. For example, if you're a private company and you want to keep the business, you know, like your algorithm a secret and a lot of, like you should not create a DAO, right? And um, and um, right. I think it's important to also understand you cannot automate everything. And sometimes you need human interaction. Um, and I also saw a question earlier if um, if DAOs are like the future of NGOs, and I think. For most of that, it's possible. There's also something that you could look into that I cannot explain is DAC, it's like Decentralized Autonomous um, Companies, um, which is like another model. Um, and, 
but yeah also not DAOs are still being researched or worked on right there's no perfect concept of a DAO yet or like a template because i also explained there's like a lot of different kind of DAOs. so i think also onboarding in a lot of DAOs is still not great sometimes contributors are not paid in the beginning it's very hard to understand how to contribute um and yeah um sometimes there's like toxic <laughs> energy i think um i they are because they are so new it, it's it sometimes can feel like a startup and you have to work too much and get too little pay and um this is also why it's very helpful to really think about the concept beforehand to like create an accessible and fair payment process as well and can i take one last question or Wait, you're muted, Arun. Because Gedeon also is. Yeah, absolutely. No, I just didn't, just so that we don't have any new yeah. questions. Just so okay. we finish what's there. Then... Yeah. Um, so, um, Gedeon, you're, you raise your hand. Hello. Uh, kommen Sie aus Deutschland? Ich komme aus Deutschland. <laughs> ah, good. Uh, so, my question was. Given like the volatility, the volatility and like the instability of the crypto market, would you say like it's a wise decision to like base your payment scheme for a, for a startup and so on on cryptocurrencies, since like the value of the cryptocurrency that I'm being paid could devalue or like it could go up? Yeah. So um, like. Yeah. To answer your question, I would probably uh, choose a stable coin for your payment and for your, like like for your, for your treasury it's also a decision if you want to have your own token for your DAO which I would not advise you unless it's very necessary um but there's already like infrastructure tools where you can distribute voting vo voting tokens that don't have to be your own and there's also stable coins that you can use for payment so um like stable coins like DAI or USDC which are packed to the dollar which is still quite stable um so there's always different options right so of course if you have a product like a protocol where you actually need your own tokens um then you want to you can also talk to your contributors like if they want to get paid 50 percent in your own to in your native token and 50 percent in a stable coin um that's up to you but if you don't have your own token, just use DAI or like other stable coins. And then okay, so stable coins would be like the way to go for yes. okay. They probably the easiest one, yes. Thank you. Um, and then I think I would just fin finish with the question. Um the ideal organization would be better off with the DAO. And I think that's a beautiful question. I think in the utopie <laughs> uh, you could say um there's a very very amazing podcast by santi siri about little democracies everywhere where you can just imagine not companies and countries but everybody just being part of different DAOs that they are interested in where they contribute to or either with work money or just like their interest in like, um, and knowledge and um, and I think that's a very very beautiful idea I think this is not <laughs> we are, like we always should str strive towards um, something like an ideal but um, currently it's definitely not the right structure for everything for, for some some projects and I think it's important to to understand what decentralization can bring um but also where it's not necessary you 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 also have to ask you can it be with can it work without and if it cannot like if it really makes sense then you can implement it if it doesn't then you don't really need it it's um i think also a question of trust privacy and decentralization if if your project needs all of these um three uh 
characteristics, then probably dialysis is, is a good way to go. Thanks, Lena. I'm going to ask Gideon just to unmute and deliver a vote of thanks. In German, please. Auf Deutsch. I'm just joking, Gideon. You can use English. Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch, aber nicht perfekt. So I think it's better. No, it's good. It's better than speaking English. It's better than our Amhara country. Okay. So I think like it's a very interesting topic that you've presented. And I've certainly like, like it's broadened my horizon when it comes to like decentralized organizations. And like the, like it just goes to show like the use cases for blockchain technology, it, it's limitless and it can be applied to like many aspects of life. And especially like allowing people, underrepresented people to join like the tech industry and also like having equal votes in an organization and so on. I think that's, an inspired idea and I, I, that's that's very interesting and yeah so thank you very much for taking the time and like taking our questions it's certainly like a very unique topic that you've discussed thank you thanks Lena. i don't know if you have any last words to say otherwise we can wrap up but thanks for your time <laughs> and we appreciate your contribution yeah of course thank you so much for inviting me i will send you an uh, information with uh, everything I mentioned because I know there was a lot of information and um, yeah thank you so much please reach out to me if you have any questions and um, I will also share two communities um, and you can also let me know what countries you're from so I can maybe find some more communities that I can connect you with and um, yeah we have Ethiopia Kenya Sudan Benin um, Nigeria and there's one more which one is rwanda cool okay amazing um i wish all of you a lot of um that you find great projects you like to work with i will also share the link to to all my socials so you can just follow me wherever you um that fits the most for you um yes uh, Thank it, you. But I can already write it here. Handle on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> um, and um, yes. Uh, I love the I love the puns in Germany. People love their puns. So <laughs> the best are the haircutting salons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's frisures. very true. It's yeah. like haircutting salons and bars. The bars, yeah, yeah. but but yeah. or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <there's> a... <laughs> Giga, Giga hits. Yeah. Session. Okay, thanks, Nana. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was great meeting all of you. Thank you. Talk Bye. to you soon. Bye.